Oh, hi. <laughs> Uh, welcome back to the channel. I'm Sam. And I'm Matt. Uh, so today we're bringing you some offhand uh, cold steel accompanying uh, weapons and uh, buckler. Uh, so uh, I think we need to start off by saying that we but lo both love both of these products. Absolutely. Uh, and they come with a great deal of positives. So the first thing, and we'll talk about both at the same time, we didn't want to do a separate video for each individual one, otherwise uh, you guys are probably going to be sick of our voices. That's true. That's very true. Uh, um, I, I'm sick of them already. Yeah, I feel like we need to stop. Um, so, uh, first thing to say, kind of like positive for both. Um, I don't know if you can see the uh, Bowie knife. Oh, yes. It kind of blends in. <laughs> that's that's maybe, maybe not a positive. That, I don't a... know. <laughs> if you're uh, an assassin, potentially. Yes, if you're an assassin in HEMA, uh, perfect to hide that away. Uh, so, uh, but with regards to both, uh, they're cheap. Uh, they're cheap uh, and they are readily available so uh, and mm. they're available from lots of different places you can get them direct from cold steel and there's a lot of uh, resellers as well and uh, amazon as well oh, of course say. yes amazon as well and i'm sure even ebay and stuff like that, you'll be able to find some as well so uh, other sellers uh then we've got the fact they're robust uh, so this buckler i don't know if you can see if the if my uh, camera on my phone is anywhere decent enough for this but you can see there's quite a few uh, chunks into that but this has been used heavily in many sparring uh, matches against a range of opponents so not just Matt here, I've used this at uh, Fight Camp, which is a wonderful event, heavily recommend it. Um, but Fight Camp, I've used this at and I've gone against various people, uh, various uh, HEMA enthusiasts who have sparred me. Um, I've had some heavy blows on that. And, and uh, not just, of course, in single combat, but also in melee as well. Yes, in the melee uh, melee games as well. So uh, definitely. Um, the other thing to say is, but, and it sense with both products this as well, that they're both robust. So I know that, Matt, you've used this quite a lot. Do you want to explain kind of like your use of your toy? Absolutely. So um, this is the, the Cold Steel buoy. It's modelled on their Laredo buoy uh, model. Uh, is it buoy, Bowie? I'm going to say buoy because that just sounds more right. David Bowie. David Bowie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's um, it's a nice standard uh, length for a buoy. There are longer and shorter versions. I really like this one. Um, it's like Sam says, as as and pretty much with all cold steel products, mm. it's very stiff. It's uh, very um, very uh, hard hitting. It's very reliable. It doesn't get chipped up too much. I've had yeah. this a very long time, and apart from a few minor nicks, uh, this is absolutely pretty much as it came out of the box. Uh, this is a, a great product, and it can be used in, in a multitude of ways to fulfill a multitude of tasks. Uh, it can be used for your standard buoy knife, and you, you, you've got a multitude of grip options there, thumb at the back or hammer fist, whatever you prefer. But also, I've used this uh, in um, sort of German dagger classes, and I've used this uh, for sort of Pringle Green type guarding the forearm actions as well. So this is a very multi-purpose uh, training tool, as well as, as like Sam says, having all the good points of a cold steel product. Mm, definitely. Um, the nice thing as well is that both products are nice quality. So they, mm. they, arrive, they arrive, they're great. And even after heavy use, they still maintain that nice quality side of things. Uh, they are, uh, they've got a great feel to them. Uh, I don't think this, we have seen this particular product being used against steel, but I know we have seen no. uh, this product, so the buckler being used against steel. I personally haven't, and I wouldn't necessarily say I'd recommend it being used. I don't think you would either. No, it's, that, so. it's not something that you would necessarily, and I, I think mm. in fact, cold steel do themselves say uh, in their product mm. description, this isn't meant for no. steel mm. sparring. That being said, as long as you're not being stupid with it, I mean, yep. it can take it. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and then, of course, you've got the fact that, uh, well, they're transferable. To, so just as Matt was saying, like yeah. he, he's used his uh, kind of bow, uh, bowie knife for a, kind of a range of different things. And of course, I mean, you can use the buckler for a range of different systems as well. Um, and well, I mean, we've used it in a lot, it, it, a lot and we've had a lot of fun with both products. Um, the only thing I will say, kind of like, which is not really a negative, it's just kind of a, an obvious safety feature, really, with both, is, um, well, that doesn't have much flex, um, obviously, because uh, with the size of it, it's not going to. So, and that, that's mm. the same for a lot of training daggers. That Absolutely, come across, and, and, so. and not a desirable quality no, either. No, definitely uh, if, not. if a dagger is too flexible, then it really mm. doesn't fulfil any function. No, exactly. And it's the same with, with the Black Fencer uh, uh, daggers we reviewed in an earlier video. So, which you've course... definitely watched, liked, and then for subscribe to our channel. Exactly. So, and, well done, you. And shared it with your friends. So, thank you very Absolutely. much. Absolutely, well done. Good. Yeah, well pat done. yourselves on the back. Um, and then, of course, this literally has no flex. I mean, it can't have any flex. <laughs> Why, would it? Why would it? Uh, if it did, you need to send it back. Um, but yeah, if you are going to uh, hit with this, 
uh, you, it's going to hurt. Um, and mm. I mean, we speak from experience of a friend of ours, uh, beloved Chris. Um, hey, Chris. So, hi, Chris. Thanks for tuning in. Um, please don't do what he did and just headbutt the buckler because somebody tells you to. It, it, it is hard, even if it's not going forward. It's it's a strong bit of kit. It, it protects you perfectly. Yeah. But if you, you were to use this in an aggressive fashion uh, towards somebody else you were sparring with, um, even hitting a fencing mask, I don't think they're going to be your friend mm. uh, afterwards. Um, and of course, with all sparring, practice safe, have fun, but practice safe. Yeah. Absolutely. I think, um, yeah, I, I think absolutely uh, I agree with what Sam said. Uh, one thing I will say in addition about the buckler is it, I do find it slightly heavier mm. than... Um, it's quite thick. That's probably it is where... The... Yeah, show them, show them so... the inside so they can see the gripping mechanism as well. Yeah, it is It is slightly heavier than a steel buckler would be of mm. roughly the same size. Just because this is obviously thicker plastic they've mm. done. And, and of course, this is a sparring tool. It's designed to take heavy punishment mm. on a regular basis. Whereas a steel buckler from the period... It's thinner. It's designed for you know SHTF moments where you have to get it out and defend yourself. It's not going to be as thick. But then that is a that's a concern that mm. that's a problem that really plagues all training weapons. You know, mm. I mean, the same for this Bowie knife. You know, the edges are much thicker than it would have to be mm. uh, for for a real thing. But these things are durable, so that means that Absolutely. you are getting value for that money, which again is not that expensive. Certainly, you, ones, you wouldn't so. want this to be as thin as an original. No, um, no, definitely. But it's something to <laughs> bear in mind. You know, there is there this does this does weigh something so if you're, yeah. if you're used to using a thinner steel buckler and you transition to this there probably will be a bit of adjustment period. yeah and it's worthwhile saying that both myself and matt would not consider ourselves uh, experts in uh, no no resources no or, or actually sparring with them i said we spar a lot with them uh, and please don't watch those videos they're somewhere in the dark corners of the hema web um and uh, if you just look for two idiots sparring with a buckler that might be us um it, it, hopefully it won't come up under that title uh but no, yes yeah, so, it is no it probably is yeah um so but yes it's his we're not experts in this field but we know for a fact because we've owned steel bucklers that there are lots of other buckler yeah. alternatives available so it's worthwhile saying that we're not saying only buy this we're mm. saying that if you did buy this it is a great product and if you're considering it like heavily recommend it it is like welcomed in uh kind of like fight camp in the the, the melee tournament mm. and i we have seen other uh club events and other club competitions that do allow this uh to be used as a standard bit of kit uh against like rawlings uh black fencer products uh because it's great against synthetics absolutely and i think one point to mention as well is that if you are a mainly synthetic heavy club then this is a great option mm. because unlike steel bucklers, it won't chip away at your blades. Mm. And it's like Matt's lost the tip uh, of his rulings many times because of the chips being taken away from his ruling blades. See the tears. Yeah, it's a horrible, horrible thing to do. And on that sad note, we will leave you and hope you uh, tune back into the channel to watch some more reviews, sparring clips and various other things that we get up to. So until next time, see you then. Thanks very much.